Hello, this is George Edmondson with MotionVFX.com. Today we are looking at M Transition Film Roll. I hope you enjoyed that little intro video. That was my family and I when we went to Paris recently, and I thought that that would be some really good footage that would work well with these transitions. So I wanted to start off really quickly by saying in the promotional video for M Transition Film Roll, it is definitely more aligned with music videos and quick cuts like that. However, M Transition Film Roll can be used in a variety of different ways. So for this tutorial, I just wanted to show you some of this footage of my family and I when we went to Paris recently and how I was able to use that for these videos. All right, let's take a look. So once you have installed M Transition Film Roll via M Installer, it can be located in your transitions. There are going to be 50 unique transitions that are all really fun to play with. Now, of course, if you scroll over the transition there in your transitions section, then you can get a real time preview as to how these are going to look. There are going to be 19 custom transitions and we will get to that in just a few minutes. And then there are going to be 30 pre-animated transitions. And again, they work the same way. If you just kind of scrub over those, you can see how they're gonna look. All right, to apply these transitions, you can do one of two things. You can simply click and drag in between the clips or at the beginning or ending of the clip, however you want and release and that transition will be applied or if you have a clip selected and you want to apply you can simply select the transition you'd like and double click and then you can see that transitions have been applied to the beginning and ending of those clips all right so why don't we go over these custom transitions first I really like all of them, but let's look at the double Q mark. Now the double Q mark is gonna work very similarly to the Q mark zoom in and zoom out. This just has both options. So let me just click and drag this in between our two clips here. And you can see as we have this selected that there are two sets of on-screen controls. I'm gonna use my arrow keys to tap forward. So you can see that first set of on-screen controls is our position one. So as we move this around, you can see how that mask is working over our footage. That is position, scale, and then rotation is not going to rotate your footage, but it will rotate your element there. And then as we continue moving forward, there's a bit of a jump cut, and that is where marker two is happening. Now over in our inspector, we do have the position scale rotation for both mark one and mark two if you want to fine tune those. But then you can see that that just kind of marks out. So I'm using my arrow keys to show you. We've got that first mark, there's the cut and then there's the cut. So if we wanted to just move this over, that's my wife there. And then that's someone that we were on the tour with. And there you go, there's your jump. So over in our inspector, we do have shake strength that you can adjust and that is going to just adjust how much strength that shake is happening. We have our grain that we can toggle on and off along with those parameters beneath. And then we have film dirt that we can toggle on and off as well. Now, if we think that the transition may be happening a little too fast, you can drag any of these transitions and you can adjust the duration and the animation will of course be adjusted accordingly. Really cool. Let's look at another one of these. Why don't we take a look at our scrolls so you can see here scrolls in the custom we can click and drag it into our next clip you can see that is just a really quick scrolls transition i'll go ahead and highlight this and you can see again there are some on-screen controls that are going to move our scrolls elements around for position scale and rotation over in our inspector, we can make those adjustments to position, scale, and rotation, as well as color. So if we wanted, you know, we might like this yellow, but maybe we wanted it to be a little bit more green or white or blue, red, whatever, you can make those adjustments there. 
Then beneath, we have the background footage shake strength, our background footage gamma, and then we have the background footage colorization that we can make changes to that color or if we just bring that down, you can definitely notice in those highlights there how that is colorizing this footage. We have our texture flip mode. If we would like to flip any of those textures there, you can see what's going on back there, kind of like a film burns look. We have glow amount angle and prism amount. We have blur, we have grain, we have film dirt. I mean, there is so much that you can really customize this as much as you would like. All right, let's continue down. We can take a look at some of our pre-animated. So here we have acid burn, which is really cool. Acid washout stains. I really love this celluloid tape roll. So why don't we just click that and we can drag that in between. We will use our arrows to kind of move forward. Now, some of these will have on-screen controls and some of them will not. For instance, the celluloid tape roll does not have on-screen controls. But we have a background footage slide toggle. Again, the shake strength. We have flashes, contrast, and more beneath. We have the background footage blend mode. So we have difference, or if you were to set that to normal, you can see what's going on here. Now we are, you know, colorizing this a bit. I'm gonna do Command Z to just take that back. We have the texture opacity, and that is going to be, of course, our tape roll. We have texture colorize. So if we would like to colorize that, you can do so here. Then we have grain and again, film dirt. Okay, we can take a look at a few more. So let's take a look at, why don't we check out our fast forward because this has some drop zones inside of it. So we're going to drag this in between and then we can have that highlighted. I'm just gonna start using my forward arrows and you can see within this transition, we have multiple drop zones as if it's fast forwarding in time. So with the highlighted over in our inspector, we have number of drop zones. You can go all the way up to eight. Now, of course, the more drop zones you have, the faster it is going to slide through. We have our drop zones saturation and the pixelate scale. So you can see how much we are pixelating that drop zone beneath. Now, if we would like to go ahead and start adding, let me use my arrows to just go back to drop zone one. We can go ahead and start adding some of these clips. You can use any type of file content that will be compatible with any drop zone. So let's click our drop zone well, and we can go over into our inspector and just find any of these clips that we may want to use and and you can see that that drop zone has now been populated and we can continue to do this for the next four drop zones if we would like and i'm just moving really quickly and click apply clip now as i move forward in my timeline we can see that we're just kind of scrolling through and then there you have it go ahead and highlight this again and we can see that we can make changes to the saturation within these. We can make it very pixelated or not very pixelated at all. And then we can continue down and you can see we have our shapes scale, which is going to be these few shapes over here, this fast forward sort of icon. We can make changes to that color if we would like. And then we have effect opacity beneath. So you can see the effect going on down there in the bottom, along with adjustable parameters beneath. And then of course, grain and film dirt. So let's check that one out. So really quickly, it just kind of toggles through, fast forwards through that footage. And of course, if we wanted to change the duration that is just going to change the duration of how long those drop zones are on the screen all right let's just take a look at a couple more this one is really nice film roll and burn we can drag this in between two clips use our arrows here to just move forward a bit we have this selected there are no on-screen controls for this one as well 
We have the background footage roll animation that we can toggle on and off. We can change the amount of roll that is happening. We have shake strength and colorize footage. So you can scale this. So if you want your footage to just stay widescreen, you can do so by scaling that frame up or you can bring it back down. I really like this look here. You can also do the same with your opacity. You can change the color of your frame if you would like. I personally do like black. I think that looks great. Then we have the texture flip. Texture opacity here. We can change the color by our hue here. Saturation and value. And then again, grain and film dirt beneath. We'll take a look at one more. I love the punch holes and I love the tape glitch. Punch holes is very similar to those first few that we looked at. So tape glitch can be our final transition that we take a look at really quickly. With that highlighted, you can see no on-screen controls for this one, but we have the shake strength over in our parameters. We have the negative. We have effect position, so you can move the mask around on where you want that position of the negative effect to happen by simply clicking and dragging up or down on that position. We have effect scale, so you can scale that up and down depending on the look that you want. And we have every option for different blend modes. We have the bad TV, how much wavy do you want? And then beneath we have distortion grain and film dirt all right and that is it from me once again this is george edmondson thank you so much for checking out the m transition film roll tutorial m transition film roll is now available on motionvfx.com be sure to subscribe and we'll see you on the next one